So guys, here we are in the selfie view perspective. Um, I just took one of my my blanks here with a radial um, grain pattern, and I just drew on one of my templates. I used to do everything by hand, and I still do sometimes. But especially if I like one design, I don't want to try like ten spoons to get it right again. But I just rather make a template and enjoy it every time. So I have my pattern. My dog goes crazy. I'm um, here with the pattern, and then I'm just gonna show you how I exit out, and I get from here to the spoon blank. I hope um, it's not too wobbly up there. But I think this is a good perspective and view for you guys. So we're starting out. This wood is pretty dry already. Um, we're starting out with the circumference of our triple C method. Um, if you don't know what the triple C um, method is, then just gonna go and check out my video. Um, I think it's a quite helpful um, kind of method for beginners and um, seasoned spoon carvers alike. So um, in our triple C method, we're gonna start out with the C for circumference. So I'm just working on the outlines, but so to say. Usually chop it to a point there, not going too close to the lines. Make sure the axe always falls in the same place and I just turn um, the piece of wood, um, keep my fingers out of the way. Here we're gonna have a knot so I can prepare for that, a series of lows. And of course, the knot makes some trouble. If it's only one knot, then I personally think it adds a little bit to the character of the spoon. It's not, you know, it's not given that it's even in the spoon at the end. But um, if it's more than one knot, then I usually pass on the, the piece of wood to some other purpose. If you know what I'm saying. So I go down a spoon from here, maybe here a little bit more. I used to go down quite like exactly to the lines before, but there is a few reasons why I don't do that anymore. One of them is that um, after I make the crank. I need to redraw the spoon and if if I completely go to the lines then usually then usually I end up having not enough space after I make the crank. So at this point my saw comes into into action. I get rid of that part. Used to chop it and you can actually chop it but it makes for a little bit more consistency of, of the work if you if you saw stuff off. I mean, you don't need this to saw 100%. You can chop most of this stuff. Sometimes I do, but especially like I said for consistency, I really like making those relief cuts here, those stop cuts at the transition. I don't go completely in um, all the way to the lines again. Um, if you're interested in this kind of equipment I use, then just look up the video where, uh, where I'm actually talking about my carving kit. So yeah, we're still working on the, the first C for the circumference, the knot again, some X relief cuts, finger out of the way, really important. This doesn't have to be big chops, it's actually enough to make small blows and let the sharp X and its weight work. And the closer I get to the line here, 
the more I chop and lift up the axe a little bit to pry away anything that's left same thing on the other side it's always practical if your chopping block has a little a few holes and and dips because you can put the corners in there and get a little bit more grip here you see what happened I just gave it a blow and split all the way to my relief cut which is good but that shouldn't happen too close to the bowl otherwise it, it might happen that I go through all the way to that part to the stop cut itself and I end up end up in the spoon bowl here we go so then the next part is using my corners here on my spoon my spoon or bowl mate I lean it like that or I drop it either way so why I do that and I don't hold it freely like that is because here I have to come at an angle at an angle and every blow I kind of have to lift with my hand at the same time so I don't actually you know the blow the energy of the blow really goes it does go into the wood and not into the tilting of the spoon so I basically Lean it here, so really all the energy of the chopping goes into the material. Okay, this is a technique I saw Jared Stone Doll using, one very seasoned and professional spoon carver. I've got to thank him for that technique what happens here sometimes what you see is that one of those little chips actually gets stuck somehow in the blade of the axe and then you really have to manually remove that piece otherwise the axe wouldn't cut anymore okay it's going quite well so we're getting closer to our shape as I said my my goal is not to take away and take off all the material all the way to the line for certain reasons so about here I'm gonna stop with the circumference for now hey Sissy hi baby Go on, Romy. Okay, so that's the first C.